Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is sulk. Let's take a moment to look at the definition of this verb. The verb sulk is used to describe uh, someone's behavior, their attitude, and it's when they are silent, they're gloomy, they're bad-tempered, and they're generally uh, if having these, these feelings because they are annoyed or possibly disappointed. This word uh, was used in a summary of a, of a video that my class had been watching and, and using as part of an activity. And so we watched a, a, a character in this particular film, <clears throat> had this uh, really upset look on his face as he walked home. And so the description said he sulked home. And he was definitely annoyed and disappointed about something that had happened. So he wasn't talking. He wasn't being friendly. Uh, it really appeared he was in a bad mood. You should know the verb sulk is a regular verb. To make the progressive form, all we need to do is add ing to form sulking. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by just adding ed. Our base verb, sulk, k, k, ends in an unvoiced K sound. This means that our past tense ending is going to make a T sound. And we're not going to add an extra syllable as we say it. It should sound like this. Sult, sult. Okay. Now, there's one phrasal verb, or, or really two, I guess, um, that you might encounter. They have the exact same uh, meaning. So you might read about someone sulking about or sulking over, and it's it's describing something very similar to that first definition we looked at. So someone is kind of sullen, they're sad, they're silent, maybe kind of resentful um, at, in their attitude or their demeanor, the way they're behaving, either because of another person or because of something. I've got two example sentences uh, to help illustrate this. Let's look at the first. He's been sulking about since he didn't get the lead role in the school play. Okay. So here, uh, maybe someone thought, I'm the best actor and I deserve kind of the biggest part, right? And then the person doesn't get it. Like, mm, I'm not going to talk to anybody. Uh, this is unfair. Mm, I'm going to have a bad attitude, right? That's what that sentence is describing. Another example, she hasn't been sulking over her ex. Okay? So sometimes uh, when people have a breakup, right, they're in a bad mood. They don't want to talk to anyone. They're just kind of ticked off, right? Here in this sentence, we've got a negative. So here, this person isn't being silent or resentful in the way they're interacting with others, right? Maybe this person is cheerful. They're happy. They're moving on. Now, let's practice our verb of the day in a couple different verb tenses. Today, we'll practice the present progressive, which is also known as the present continuous. And then we'll also talk about the simple future using be going to. Let's start with the present progressive. Uh, we use this verb tense to talk about something that is happening right now. It's in the moment. Uh, it's in progress, as the name of this verb tense uh, implies. We might also use it to describe something that is happening during a time period that has not yet been completed. I like calling this present progressive instead of present continuous with my students because I like to remind them that two Ps help me remember I need two parts to make my verb. Okay? So in the present progressive, I'm going to use a present form of be. So if my subject is I, I use am. If my subject is you, we, or they, I use are. And if my subject is he, she, or it, I use is. Okay. So we're going to have subject, a form of be, and then we have the ing form of the verb. Here's an example sentence. The toddler is sulking in hopes that she gets her way. Right? So here, like, I'm not going to talk to anyone. I'm going to be... I'm in a mood until I get whatever it is I want. Now, if I want to make a negative present progressive sentence, again, I start with my subject. I use my form of be that matches that subject. Then I use not and then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example. The team's star 
isn't sulking at finding himself on the bench. So sometimes uh, we, we sort of envision, right, the star player, the best player. They're going to be playing all the time, but maybe they're having a bad week. Uh, maybe they're coming back from an injury. This player, though, isn't in a bad mood, right? This player is uh, just probably being a really good teammate, encouraging others, not letting himself get into uh, a really unpleasant mood. Finally, if I want to make a yes or no question in the present progressive, I start with a form of be, then I use my subject, and then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example. Are you still sulking? Right? So I might say this to uh, a spouse, uh, a very close friend. I, I would never say this I, uh, to a stranger um, because many times I don't know what has caused them to be in such a bad mood. But with someone I'm close to, right, I might know what it is they're upset about and I'm kind of suggesting like, eh, let's get over this and, and let's have a better attitude. Let's behave a little more kindly, a little more nicely. Now let's talk about the simple future. Today we're going to focus on making sentences with be going to. Be going to is most common when we're talking about our plans, but you still might encounter it as people uh, make predictions um, or promises, but plans are the most common. Okay. Now, uh, when I go to make a simple future sentence using be going to, I'm going to start with my subject, then I'm going to use the present form of be, just like we talked about, am, is, or are. Okay. Then I use going to and then the base verb. So no special endings um, at, at the end of the verb here in the simple future. Let's look at an affirmative example. The grandparents are going to sulk if they can't see their new grandchild for a month. Right. So I, I've met some people that would be very uh, upset. They would be resentful. They would be in a bad mood and not excited to talk to anyone, right, if they can't experience sort of the excitement of a new baby. Now, if we want to make a negative simple future sentence, again, we start with our subject and our form of be that matches. Then we insert not, going, to, and the base verb. You can see that in my example. I'm not going to sulk if I don't get the promotion. Okay. So, um, uh, could be someone's plan, right? Or uh, maybe a, a bit of a promise and prediction. Could be all three of those things as, as someone's talking about how they might handle some bad news. Finally, let's look at making a yes or no question in the simple future. To do this, we're going to start with a form of be. Then we're going to have our subject. Then going to and the base verb. Here's my last example. Are most of you going to sulk the entire day? Now, I never have this experience in any of my classes. I have very cheerful students who are active and engaged, and uh, many times they're laughing and making jokes. Um, but I can I can think back in the past, some of my earlier classes where it did, it seemed like everybody was going to have a bad day. So I might have asked my class, are, are we going to sulk all class period? Hope not. <laughs> so now let's spend a moment looking at some words that are related to our verb sulk. And the first word we're going to look at is just the noun form of this word. So it has the exact same spelling and the exact same pronunciation. So when I use sulk as a noun, I'm, I'm talking about a period of time where someone is kind of gloomy, they're sad, maybe they're bad tempered, they're silent, right? And all of this is resulting from something that has annoyed them, maybe um, a feeling of, of resentment, like um, I haven't been treated fairly or the, the right thing didn't happen in this particular situation. An example of uh, this word as a noun in a sentence might be, the body language expert had a lot to say about how he is in a sulk. So um, sometimes you see people describing uh, or interpreting what someone else might be thinking or suggesting based on their words, their movements, their tone of voice. So here we have somebody uh, talking about observing someone else being in this gloomy, uh, silent sort of period. Another related word you might encounter is the adjective sulky. 
we use this just to describe someone that's bad-tempered or gloomy. Uh, maybe they refuse to be cheerful, to be happy, or to cooperate with something. An example of this. He's been in a sulky mood all week. Right? So hopefully this isn't describing any of your co-workers or family members, because that's not a lot of fun to be around. The last word we'll discuss today is the adverb sulkily. This is describing uh, an action that's being done in a bad mood or maybe being done without speaking uh, because someone is feeling angry, resentful, annoyed, all of, all of these kind of uncomfortable feelings. So an example of this might be, she walked home sulkily. Right? So here we're describing that, that action of walking. Right? Maybe she's got her arms crossed, which in the U.S. is usually a sign that's, that someone is not very open or, right, head down, uh, kind of a frown or, or just a, a not a very friendly look on their face. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope no one has or feels the need to sulk through any part of your day. Have a great one.